Welcome back here to the roof at Case Gymnasium. The Terriers and the St. Peter's Peacocks. Be you trailing St. Peter's 41-21 at the half. I'm happy to be joined by the new Director of Athletics here at Boston University, Drew Marichello. Drew, thanks for joining us. Congratulations again. Thanks, Brian. Good to see you. Well, obviously a lot to talk about. We'll start with this first half for the uh -huh. Terriers. Uh, you know, it's not one that you would say would go down as pretty, but you got to credit St. Peter's. They came out firing, hit a lot of <laughs> tough shots in that first played half. Played some great shots, played some great defense around the basket, and really uh, took it to us. And they're almost doubled up. Uh, hopefully better things to come in the second half for us. Well, I wanted to actually keep ask, keep talking about men's basketball and talk about the performance they had at Kentucky. Without yeah. a question, one of the bright spots of the season for the Terriers, the way they competed with the number one team in the country. And I was just curious, obviously you had a, in a different position. What, have you, what did you hear as a reaction after that game? Well, I was at the men's hockey game that night that the team was playing down in Kentucky, and there was a buzz going around in Kansas <laughs> Arena as we were within six points and we were within eight points yep. and so forth. And obviously the game got away at the at the very end. But I think people were, were pleased with our effort. I spoke with Joe. He thought we played great. He thought that, uh, you know, they scored more points at the very end of the right. game and made it, I don't want to say a misleading score. You never want to say that about Kentucky. But there's a point where we were closer than the final score. And I, I'm not surprised at the same time. I'm really not. I, I think when we, we play a team like Kentucky, uh, you, you are not the favorite going in. <laughs> but you don't schedule games and say, oh, we're going to lose this game. Right. So you, you go there, you're hungry, you're well prepared, and every game that we schedule is strategically placed on the schedule for a reason. It's because we're going to get better after playing there. So I, I, I wasn't really surprised that we that we hung in there. It's obviously a great team. They had just beaten Kansas yep. by a lot yep. right before, but, but we've got some resilient kids. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I wanted to ask you now, you're you know three months in almost settling into this position. What's been the biggest adjustment for you, and do you feel settled in? Are you, did you finally move into the new office? I now have three offices, Brian, because I'm, I'm so unsettled. Um, yeah, I've talked to people who've been directors of athletics for 25 years. You never get settled. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's, the way that's to probably the wrong word to use or the wrong term. But no, I, I think that we're, we have a rhythm right now. Uh, certainly senior staff has changed yep. quite a bit as well. So we're, we've got a lot of people playing out of position, so to speak. But I will say this, that we've got a great group of coaches. We've got a great staff, as you well know. Yep. And they've made this transition uh, really easy. So it's a different learning curve when you're coming from the inside, when you're an internal person. Uh, the different expectations, but our coaching staff has really uh, really helped me uh, to, to, to glide into, uh, into this role. Well, I wanted to talk about you glided right into the fall schedule, and afterwards you, you could talk about the field hockey Patriot League title, the women's soccer Patriot League title, the regular season title for the men's soccer team, but even after all that, the academic honors that were bestowed upon the Terriers following these seasons were terrific. Uh, certainly you want to talk about Nick Thompson of the men's soccer team with the academic All-American and then Sophie Laredo of field hockey also being named to an All-American second team. It, it's just terrific. You see it on field as well as in the classroom. Yeah, well, you touched on it. Uh, we had a wonderful fall. Uh, men's soccer uh, losing in overtime in the championship game. I mean, there's certainly no shame in that. It was a <laughs> wonderful season for, uh, for Neil Roberts who completed his 30th year. Uh, Nancy Feldman, again going to the NCAA tournament, winning a great game at Colgate and, and, and losing at home but hosting an NCAA game, which is wonderful. Field hockey falling to a, a, a team that went to the Final Four uh, by, by a goal yep. on the road. So so Sally had a great year. Rosa Moriello on the cross-country squad. Right. Uh, women's cross-country winning the Patriot League. We had a really good two-week stretch right there. Uh, athletically, and as you alluded to, uh, the, the academic honors as well. Our, our kids excel in the classroom, Brian. I mean, there's no, there's no surprise. And we can do both. You can be really good on the field and really good in the classroom. Uh, Nick being named an academic All-American. We're just so proud of him. Only three keepers in the country named to that team. And Nick, Nick being one of them, he's just wonderful. You know, normally when you get a 3.87 GPA like Nick Thompson did, that's already enough to put on the refrigerator. But now you kind of get that extra title to go on there as well. It makes it pretty special. Nick's had a great college career. And he's a, he's a wonderful student-athlete uh, ambassador. We're just proud that he's been a Terrier. I had a moment where I had to check my own age, believe it or not, when I found out that the women's ice hockey team is celebrating 10 seasons already. Just phenomenal to think that it was started while I was still in school, and now you look at what they've done in 10 years. The resume has been terrific. Two national championship appearances, yeah. three straight yeah. Hockey East championships. Brian DeRosha continues to uh, get this team to excel year after year, being in the top five. But just the fact that they're 10 years old, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's right. Well, I saw you on the Terrier Take 5 with Glenn Harris up in the weight room. And uh -oh. I, didn't, I didn't think you uh -oh. looked that young. Oh, so, okay. There, yep. Uh, no, Brian has done a great job. I mean, Brian has done a, a wonderful job in 10 years. I don't want to say it's no surprise. 
But those of us that are around Brian on a, on a regular basis know that he's a tremendous coach. He's a great person. He's a great mentor to our, our young coaches. Um, he's one of those people that he's just, he's just a great staff member, a, a great member of the, of the campus community, not just for women's ice hockey. And everything that they've done as a program on top of that is really just icing on the cake to who Brian is. And normally you would think that 10 years is still in your infancy stage, but what they've done already, they don't seem like infants in, in women's ice hockey. Set the bar really high yeah. from the beginning. So, I wanted to lastly touch upon men's ice hockey who's playing part of a home and home with Merrimack. They'll be playing tonight at 7 o'clock from Aganis Arena. Men's ice hockey was number one in the country yeah. just a couple weeks ago. You, you know, it's hard not to talk about what Jack Eichel, again, bringing that name. And again, it seems like Coach Wynn has gotten this team back up to the standard that we expect for BU. Yeah, certainly uh, Jack Eichel is the most accomplished freshman in the country. He's one of the best players in the country. He's not the only member of this team right all. now that's that's starring. The, the upperclassmen, they're all having better years than they were last year. Whether that's O'Regan, whether that's Holman, uh, the goaltenders yep. have been great. Uh, Grizzlick's playing well. And then you take Eichel, and then you add to Eichel the Fortunatos, the Hickeys, the Diffleys, the Greers. And I don't want to leave anybody <laughs> out, but but it really is just an unbelievable freshman class. Yep. And, you know, the number one ranking was nice. But nobody was really, yeah. Nobody was excited about it. It was a, it was a good, uh, I guess, uh, a bullet point marketing point. <laughs> but at the same time, we weren't really that excited to, uh, because there's so many games of hockey to play. Uh, David Quinn's done a great job. I mean, he certainly had a tough year last year, winning ten games. But we're we're at nine wins right now, so he's done a wonderful job. On top of the wins from the hockey program, I'm sure you'll take what is expected tonight as part of the. Uh, now an annual tradition, 10 years in, is the teddy bear toss. Yeah. They'll be doing that tonight at the men's ice hockey uh, game against Merrimack where they will be raising money for Boston Children's Hospital and donating the stuffed animals. It's just a great thing as we lead into the holiday season. Yeah, that's another tradition. It's hard to believe that's been 10 years as well. Uh, you know, the, the, the hockey program is around some great charitable events. Uh, the Autism Speaks, they're very involved with that. And they're, they're, the, the teddy bear toss is one of those great events. You've got to see it. It's a lot of fun. And uh, it's hard, again, hard to believe it's uh, 10 years but hopefully we get a great turnout tonight, which is supposed to be a great turnout. Yes. And then uh, Teddy Bear Toss being part of a great hockey night will be tremendous for the Terriers. Drew, I've taken up too much of your time. Enjoy the rest of the game. Always good to see you, Brian. Always. Thank you. That's Drew Marichello, the Director of Athletics here at Boston University. We'll